Hello and welcome next ma- Hello, welcome in Ex Machina, and today we... Hello, welcome in Ex Machina, and today we are going to see organic in... So, today we are going to see organic in... Okay, so today we are going to see organic improv, which is improv aiming at inventing games on stage and drawing its strengths from the group. In the previous video, I have shown you the different types of games. So the idea is to go from this to this. The key to create a game is listening. Listening in improv is not just hearing, it's the perception of everything happening on stage. The space, the evolution of the character, the evolution of the story. A good improviser can see every element of every scene at any moment. For example... Okay, how many elements did you see? I stayed on the same line. I relaxed when I rubbed my hair. I rubbed my hair slowly. I didn't say anything. I stopped. I was very rigid. I just made myself a bit less than 10 propositions in just a few seconds. Now it's up to me to reuse them to play with it and start to build something. Another important part of listening is the ability to identify patterns or recurring behaviors. In organic improv, every time you see something twice, a little bell rings inside your head because you have just discovered the beginning of a game. This is an example of what we call the first unusual element. An organic improv works roughly like this. First, there is an exploration phase where you establish a platform. Then, when you identify the first unusual thing, you use it to create a game thanks to three very simple mechanisms. One, the mechanism of repetition. The idea is simply to do the same thing again and again and again. When we use the mechanism of repetition, we often use the rule of the three. If you do something twice, you have to do it a third time. Why? Because just like you, the audience is a very good listener. The first time something happens, the audience identifies it. The second time, the audience recognizes it and identifies a pattern. The third time, the audience recognizes the pattern. And it's extremely satisfying for them, because suddenly the audience goes, Haha, uh -huh. I knew it. You satisfy one of the most important needs of the audience, anticipation. We often play with it, whether in cinema or in theater, here to give the audience what they want, but sometimes also to surprise them. So why three and not four? Because recognizing once is satisfying, recognizing twice it's redundant, so it's boring. So if you want to repeat something more than three times, you have to repeat it a lot, until it becomes a routine that you can then break. But we will get to talk about it with the storytelling. Two, the mechanism of amplification. If you repeat something, it becomes quickly interesting to make it bigger. For example, the scene that I have shown you, if you take the aspect I relax when I rub my hair. You can quickly create a character, a situation, a problem, well, a game. Amplification allows you to explore a scene, what is at stake, and to increase the tension. My character who enjoys rubbing his hair is self-defining. It seems that this character is vain, superficial, and stressed. So why? How can you justify that? Maybe I'm a top model obsessed with his hair before a job interview. Bam! I have my who, my what, and my when. I almost have my relationship with the next person coming on stage, my employer. And I might even have my wear, maybe I am in a model agency. And I also quickly have the rules of my game. I even have the choice between a problem, getting rid of my obsession, a constraint, not showing my obsession, a goal, sharing my obsession. All that just by amplifying one thing. If you can listen, amplify and justify, then you can start any improv from scratch and find a game very quickly. Three, the mechanism of if this, then what? If this is true, what else is true? It's exactly what you have seen at the beginning of the video. If I can interact with the line by pushing it, maybe I can break it with a punch. If I can break it, maybe I know Kung Fu. And if I know Kung Fu, maybe I can transform into a Super Saiyan. This mechanism is referring to a principle that Keith Johnston calls the circle of expectations. 
The circle of expectations includes everything that you would expect in a scene. For example, in a hospital, you would expect to see a scalpel or a fly because they are corpses in hospital. If you bring a ninja, the audience is going to go... So the audience will stop following you and anything you can do with your ninja will have no impact on the audience. The scene is simply lost. Be very careful, on stage everything has to be justified. But now, imagine that the surgeon uses his scalpel to cut a fly in half. And that a nurse goes, Why doctor? How did you do that? Oh you know, I did my medical school in Japan. <laughs> Bam, your circle of expectations has just expanded. Now you can bring up ninjas because you have brought Japan. We'll find you, Jason Sama. You will pay for the disgrace you brought upon us. You immediately have a game and even a story. And of course, you can combine the three mechanisms together. Later, the surgeon can perfectly use his scalpel to cut shurikens or bullets in half. Repetition, amplification, if this, then what? Once you know how to do that with yourself, you can go further and start to do that with your scene partners. Through mutual listening, you try to create what Declos called a group mind. Which means that the scene totally feeds on the group without anyone taking the lead. This is what the Harold format is trying to achieve. At first, the improvisers try to invent a story, but then they only focus on the patterns within the scene and the obvious connections they can establish between the scenes. Then you just need to follow the thread of these connections to make the story move forward or to find games. This constant quest for patterns and connections is a creation process dear to their close. In a good organic improv, you can't tell where the ideas are coming from, because of the chemistry between the players and because the intelligence of the group is far superior to the sum of the individuals. And voila, that's all for today. Uh, we'll get to talk more about organic improv and we'll be talking about the Harold. In the meantime, don't hesitate to like, subscribe or share this video. And don't hesitate to leave a comment, um, whether you have a question or if you just liked it or if you disagree, as long as it is constructive and interesting. See you soon. Goodbye.